So I'm gonna go over the uh, the deck builds for day one, game one of my uh, four player commander deck building challenge little experiment. Um, originally, when I laid this out, I was gonna make the, all the decks uh, in what I would, was gonna call uh, brawl modern, but that didn't work out. Uh, number one, because I realized that I really wanted to test my te my uh, decks online, even in solitaire. I cannot play anything casual online. Everybody's playing all the broken uh, competitive EVH decks in the world, so I just can't do it. I just get beat to a pulp, and I don't even get to uh, do anything. Uh, so, anyways, the setup and there's a the first video in this playlist explains the setup. Is um, uh, we're, we give the players the four theoretical players, my three imaginary friends and myself, uh, one of the uh, five Wedge Commanders in Cans of Tarkir, and two of the ten uh, Return to Ravnica Gate, gate uh, Crash uh, Guild Commanders. We select the pairs, lay them all out, and uh, so no con they're only uh, using for the decks uh, common lands, um, and they just play the three games in a row. So this is the very first game of what I'm calling day one, I think that's what, how it would normally be done if you were hanging out with three other people at a, at a vacation site and the wives were not playing Magic, or maybe one of the wives played Magic, that would be incredible. I wish my wife would play Magic. I don't see that happening anytime soon, unfortunately. Uh, so day one, game one, uh, player one is on Xperia, player two is on Gerard, uh, player three is on Nip Mizet, and player four is on Borbo. I'll just call him Borbo. I can't pronounce his name anyways. He's angry. Uh, the Asperia deck, before any selections are made, uh, starts with 35 creatures and 34 non-creatures. Uh, that means it's a lot like a bottle a battle bond, not bottle bond, battle bond build. Uh, you're going to take out a few things and then you're done. You got a deck. Uh, so in this case, I, I immediately see that as far as Radiance and strength of arms and uh, fight are things I want to get rid of. Uh, I also want to get rid of Mind uh, Reaver uh, because it's got the with the same name. Anything with the same name is not going to be in here. There's only one thing with the same name. It's a singleton deck. It's a commander deck. Uh, Scepter of Empires, uh, also uh, highlighted in red, uh, is part of a combo with two other cards. Without that combo, it just pinks for one. I no, I, I don't want to play it in this deck. Uh, Trade Doctrine, I'm sure, is a very interesting card. Uh, it's too narrow in scope for what I want to do with this deck. Uh, so I'm taking it out. Maybe you can leave me something in the comments if you've ever played it and you think it's good. Uh, I'll learn something from you. But right now, I'm taking it out. Uh, the deck is a white blue deck. Uh, it's going for the instance and sorceries theme more than the artifact theme. Um, and that's just the way it played out with the selection that I have. Uh, again, it's a very limited, limited selection. I also took out a efficient construction because I'm not really an artifacts in here. Um, and I think that's all I took out from these. Uh, oh, and I took out Volatile Rig. Um, it's not a chaos deck. I don't really like coin flipping. I also took out Silent Artisan. It's a little on the weak side uh, for a five drop. Uh, and then I also took out Lamp Lighter of Sell Off. Sell Off. Sell Off is what I want to read it like. Uh, because it's got a, if you control another creature card, we're not on tribal. Uh, I don't really think we have that many zombies in here. So that card just didn't really fit the deck. Not really seeing anything that is a zombie right now when I look through the cards. So, so I took that out. And that means that uh, I, I'm, I'm taking out five creatures and four non-creatures for this deck. I also took the time to take this deck and trim it into uh, an MTGO modern build. I, I'll run through it as well. I, I'm not sure if I'm going to run through it in the videos that I'm going to be making for each deck. The way the MTGO player works, because it creates a new screen for a game, I'm only able to test and uh, make a video of a deck. I'm not sure if I will, uh, I will play it, 
but as a as a as a modern build, this deck is a little more effective than the commander deck, just because I was able to narrow it down and take out all the really lame cards that just landed here from cracking the packs. Uh, and like I'm like I've seen before with Battle Bond, if you've got a, a commander build, and I think this 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 is a, I hope a lesson for wizards from Battle Bond. I hope it is. If you narrow, if you don't have that many things to take out, you're just playing with whatever you uh, pulled in a sealed selection, even an in, even in a draft selection. I don't think that's great. And so, uh, but anyways, here's here is the uh, the modern build for this deck. I'm gonna go through all of them very quickly, and then I'll go back and go through each one uh, sequentially. Okay. So this is a, a much tighter deck. It really kind of eliminates the whole artifact theme. Uh, and again, I'm gonna go through this deck in detail later. I'm just showing you guys kind of like a glance of it. Um, of course, in the, uh, I, at some point, I think I'm gonna make uh, uh, digital decks of this and post them so that the videos have the deck lists. Uh, I did include Metallurgic Summonings, even though it's a kind of a, uh, an artifact centered card uh, it's a mythic it's pretty good I mean I've lost games to it uh, so a modern it's got a really tight uh, mana curve uh, very much on the one two three it should be a fairly fast deck even for white blue uh, and I'm definitely gonna play it out just for fun then the commander build uh, I'm gonna and I'm gonna go through the cards I've made it in the commander build I'm actually changing a little bit the story uh, so it's got an implement, it's got Terrarium for mana fixing, uh, it's got God's Willing for taking out, for giving protection to something before it's going to be taken out. The Raptor gets pretty big, can get big, it starts as a 0-1, but anything that lands on the board is going to boost it most of the time. Uh, the Bear is fickle, but it's still a, a 1-2-2. Two, two. I'm not really doing a lot of returning non-land permanent and playing with ETBs. But I still left the Retraction Helix in the in the build because I don't really have a lot of cards that I can get rid of. Uh, the same with the uh, the uh, the card the uh, the uh, Fuse card from Dragon's Maze. Uh, on white, it'll target it'll give something uh, a big a fat butt and protect it uh, for two white, and then for one blue, uh, it, it does uh, limits uh, some big critter from hitting you i'm not a great fan of these effects but that type of effect but i'll leave it in here for now then if we go again through the Esperia deck i'm not going to go through every single card i'm going to highlight a few cards and then let leave it at that because if i went through 24 cards in a row uh, i'd be here for a long time uh, I'm, I'm i think i like this in this selection i really like swan song uh, it's a one drop uh, counter spell. That's pretty good. Even though you you leave your your uh, opponent a 2-2 uh, flyer. Then for the tur the turtle is pretty good. We're not on energy in this deck. And if I was the turtle, the thriving turtle is way better than it's going to be in this deck. And nullify is another one that I'm going to mention. You're going to have to somebody, I mean if your opponent doesn't have any auras, you're really doing counter target creature spell, which is fine. It's not bad. You've got a pacifism. Your uh, Eddie Trail Hawk is on energy. That's okay. The homunculus uh, allows you to search. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, to spend mana uh, to cast an instant or sorcery spell. So it's kind of like a mana dork, colorless mana dork for uh, instants and sorceries. You've got an Essence Scatter, that's not bad. You've got a Decommission, so you can take out artifacts or enchantments. Um, you also have uh, Excoriate, and I've played it, and it kind of sucks. Uh, this is the thing with having Born of the Gods packs. Uh, you're going to get some of the cards from that set that weren't too hot. You do have Divination, you do have Displays, even though there's not a lot of ETBs in this deck, uh, this have 
in a deck that had a ton of enter the battlefield effects it would be much better but i'm still going to keep it again i didn't have the choice of taking out too many things uh, the aerial responder is a great critter flying vigilance lifelink i love it uh, faith on broken is a four drop uh, o-ring for creatures we'll see how it plays out and uh then at the very top of the curve, just got a bunch of, uh, not a bunch, a few uh, big flyers. Pentavus is here because I didn't really have the ability to get rid of it. If I'd had a broader selection, um, I would have not played it. Okay, Jarad, the Jarad deck was a much better deck, I think, than one on player two. Uh, because it, number one, it starts with 46 creatures and 33 non-creatures, which means that I can take out... A good number of things. I can be picky in what I take out, which means that I can be picky in what I can leave in. And I, maybe it's my own bias, because I love this color combination, and I love black, and I love green by themselves as well. Uh, but I, I, I'm a lot fonder of this deck than I am of the Esperia deck. Uh, actually, the Esperia deck is the reason why what triggered me to add more packs for day for game two, which I wasn't planning to uh, do so originally. All right, so and I'm not going to go through every card as I mentioned before, but it does have a scorpion with death touch, a siege scorpion, which is great. I think that card is awesome. Uh, it's got a duress, um, so it's got a couple of vehicles. I, I, I I'm really warming up to vehicles. Pick the brain is not doing anything in here. Uh, because it, it, you are in a commander build and really you're not going to do anything with it. Um, now let me go through the whole deck briefly and see if I... So that was the mana curve and then I started making selections and getting rid of cards. So yeah, so I'm showing you what the, the, the player 2's selection on green black is and just briefly going through what things that I think I'm going to be getting rid of. I, and I'll go through those in the next slides. Um, this is just a glance. It's got a naturalize. It's got some great cards. I really like this selection. Uh, on the lower right, Herald of Torment. It's got a Morbid Curiosity. It's got some really good cards. Top right, uh, Satyr, Sa uh, Sa Seder? Seder Wayfinder. Yeah. It's got a Putrefy right smack in the middle. Um, it's got some really good cards. It also has a Pontiff of Blight. I'm not sure if I kept it. So anyways, that is the mana curve of the cards as they come in the selection. And then we can take our time getting rid of a lot of these cards and trimming this deck to what I think is a, it's a reasonable commander build um, with 14 packs. So I got rid of Thraven uh, Gargoyle. Flips over to be a 4-2, but the flip is pretty heavy. Eager Construct, I don't really want to give my opponent a Scry 1. Even if I'm not getting my own Scry 1, I decided that's not what I wanted to do. I also didn't want to, didn't want the tree, uh, so I got rid of it, the Black uh, Oak. Uh, Olivia's Dragoon, discard a card, gains flying, it's really not worth it. I already have flyers. Now, for some reason, I kept Pick the Brain, and I don't really know why. Um... I think I'm going to make a change. I'm going to change that card out when I play it, when I model it. I should have taken it out. Got rid of Return Centaur. I got rid of Graph Mole. I'm not really interested in gaining life. I'm not on Gates, so I got rid of Saruli. Uh, and that's, that's all I got rid of for now in here. Then I got rid of Base uh, Maze Behemoth also. Okay. Yeah, okay, here I go. So I realize now that I did a second round. So that was my first round. And then on my second round, I did get rid of Pick the Brain. I got rid of uh, Slayer's Cleaver. I, I got rid of the Mobile Garrison. And comm Commencement of Festivities. I'm not on Fog Effects. I'm not trying to prevent any damage in here. Uh, then I also got rid of Weight of the Underworld. Time to Feed. And um, 
the reinforcements enchantment. Get rid of those three. And I got rid of the clock up woman's. I'm not really doing any uh, crazy artifact tricks. Also got rid of the Aradara Express. Destroy the evidence, even though it's a fine card, but it's a still a five drop. And I've got better things that I want to keep. Then I also got rid of Ever After. Maybe that's a mistake. You guys can tell me. Okay, so here is the final build. And I'm, I'm really glad that I got rid of Pick the Brain. So... I've got a duress like I mentioned before, and I've got the Scorpion. I think this is a pretty good deck compared to the Asperia deck. I like it more. I just do. You guys can pause it and look at the cards. I'm also going to have a, uh, a deck list at some point. It also has an Ilea. Even though I'm not exactly on, uh, on Devotion to Green, it's still a pretty good card. So I want to keep that in here. And that's the mana curve for the deck. Okay, so now we're on to Nip Nizet. This one is a lot like Esperia. It's a really tight commander build. It's got 30 creatures and 34 non-creatures. I'm not too worried about the 30 creature count because I'm on instance and sorceries in blue-red. But I would have really liked it if it was like 35, 36. And I can get rid of five or six creatures. Instead, I'm really not going to get rid of almost any creature. I'm not going to get rid of almost anything. Uh, but I know for a fact that the mana curve has got too many one drops. So I'm going to home in in this deck in the few uh, cards that I want to get rid of. And get rid of Lost in the Labyrinth and Furious Resistance. Mostly because they're one drops. So I was tight on the one drops. And then I got rid of Spark of Creativity as well. Um, then uh, Stensia Banquet. It's all about vampires. I don't care about that card in this in this selection. And I also got rid of Way of the Thief because I'm not on gates. I'm not doing a gate thing in this deck. Okay, so I'll briefly show the cards and you guys can pause it and look at what I have. You can also tell me in the comments uh, if I messed up or you would have done something else the card does have a person uh, the deck does have the sphinx from theros right i love that card it does scry three i think it's a great card i also really like uh titan of eternal fire even though i'm not on humans um it's a six drop but i want to try that card out later in some other build I've, I've been looking at it and thinking about what to do uh, i like i like the ability that it gives all humans that you control so there you have it. I got rid of zero creatures and I got rid of five non-creatures. I still have too many one drops uh, for my own taste. Um, but, uh, but I'm still going to keep the zero creatures thing. Okay, so now we move on to Borbo. And... Uh, the Borbo deck was a much better build, in my opinion. Of course, red-green, I happen to think they tend to be easy builds. That's just my opinion. You just got to beat face. Anything that beats face and has haste, and you can enchant and make it bigger and all that good stuff, it's going to be a good uh, red-green build. It already starts with a great mana curve, and it's at 38 creatures and 35 non-creatures. This is a fantastic build, even with 14 packs. Uh, so basically when you look back at the four builds, two were kind of lame and two I think were fun and good. Uh, and this is of course why for game two I added four more packs to each uh, theoretical player's build. Okay. So I didn't cut anything out from this uh, early range. I did cut out the uh, Smelt Ward Gatekeepers. I'm not on gates. Uh, I got I got rid of Explosive Impact, uh, Rage of Purpurus. I did keep my tre Treacherous Instinct. Um, and I got rid of Structural distor this, uh, Distortion. Then in the green range, I got rid of the cards that are highlighted there. Waxing Moon. I'm not on Werewolves. I really like the Feral Invocation with Flash and giving something plus two plus two. But I have an effect similar to it at a lower casting cost already in the deck. And I just need to keep other things that I think are better. 
like creatures. Uh, the same with Death's Presence and uh, Time to Feed. I Is it Time to Feed or Time to Fight? I can barely read it. Well, the next time I do the highlights, I'm going to make sure that I can read the title. I don't, I don't really want a heavy fighting uh, card in this deck. Then the uh, sorcery that, that drops a 4-4 Rhino for 8 is not going to make it. Even though it's got the populate. We're not really on tokens in here. So I'm not going to do that. And then I'm not on an artifact theme. Uh, just like Battle Bond, the artifacts really help you. Uh, but I still got rid of some of them. And I'm showing them there. Inventor's Goggles, I'm not on Artificers. Uh, and I'm not an assembly worker, so I got rid of that one. I don't really need super heavy mana fixing, so I got rid of the Opaline Unicorn. You guys can disagree and tell me that I did something stupid. Uh, then I did get rid also of the Renegade Fre uh, Freighter. And that's pretty much it. I got rid of three creatures, and I got rid of 11 non-creatures. And this is what the deck looks like fully built. I don't have a lot of dual lands these days online. And I can, it's kind of nice I'm doing that almost on purpose. Uh, when I do these builds, they're really basic land builds. Uh, maybe someday I'll spend money again renting pixels for dual lands. I used to do that before I sold out. I don't do that anymore. I'm not sure that I'm going to do it. Uh, so this is the build. You guys can pause it and look at every card. Uh, I think it's solid for uh, selection just pulled out of random packs. Yes, it does have a Consulate Skygate as a defender with Reach. I don't have a lot of flyers, so Reach is, is good. I do have a Boon Satire, or a Seder, Seder. Let's call him a Seder. Uh, and like I mentioned before, I do have a, the Pit Fight card, so I, that's why I didn't keep the heavier uh, fight card. And I do have the Hydra. I left it in here. And I left one of the main... Uh, Cards from Dragon's Mace that are all junk uh, commons, uh, the Rusher, as a 663. So that's your mana curve. Uh, typical of red green, it's just 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, then uh, I'll end by showing you guys what, what were the packs that I ended up putting in the selection for game one. They're on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, which doesn't really concern this build, these builds, but will the, for the game two builds. I added those packs. I put in a fat pack from Ether Revolt that was loaded with goodies. Uh, I put in an RTR pack. I put in two Theros packs that I had left over. And then from one of those three packs that I buy at Target, I got Kaladesh and uh, Shadows over Innistrad out of those. So there you have it. You can pause and think through uh, the packs that I put in. Uh, I think 18 packs is great. It's, about, it's half a box per player. A little less because the battle pack selections are not full packs or 10 cards instead of 15. Still. Um, anyways, so the next video I'm going to model, I'm going to go into Solitaire uh, and play the first deck, which will be Asperia. And the way the player works, there's going to be one video per deck. So four more videos are going to follow this one.